There are many people who've been arguing that governments can help to manage the economy, can help to stimulate growth, can help to ensure prosperity. It's not as though we're starting from a blank slate. We have the, the thought, we have the views developed, we have the policy prescriptions in place. What we need is the political will to put those policies into action. We can trace the problems of austerity back to the deregulation of financial markets, which really took place in the early 1980s. There's a notion that free markets always work, and so we deregulated financial markets. And that led to an explosion of credit, an explosion of credit which also led to an explosion of debt. And those were the long-term structural problems which led to the period of austerity. The real problem is we didn't regulate or manage our financial sector correctly. Uh, and this isn't a problem of the last five or ten years, it goes back for nearly 30 years in terms of the idea that free markets always work and financial markets always work. The real problem, if we look at the financial sector, is the financial se think about the role of the financial sector. The role of the financial sector should be to support economic activity, to support trade, to support investment, to support businesses large and small. The problem with deregulation is that the financial sector almost turned into a casino. It was more concerned with gambling, more concerned with speculation rather than real economic activity. And once the financial sector become disconnected from the rest of the economy, that's where the problem started. If we take the comparison between the United States and Europe, for instance, in the United States, there are, the government is still taking an active role to try and stimulate economic activity. And we're going to see reasonably good growth in the United States this year. In Europe, and particularly the UK, there's been a a cutting agenda, cutting government expenditure, trying to reduce the budget deficit very, very quickly. And there become, that, those policies are self-defeating because if you cut the government expenditure too quickly, if you try and cut the budget deficit too quickly, you slow economic growth and you make things worse. So we see a contrasting experience in terms of policies to deal with austerity. In the United States, broadly getting it right, in Europe, broadly getting it wrong. The other agendas we need to think about is how do we deal with the financial sector in the future and where does growth for the economy come, for, come from in the future? The key short-term issue that the United States has done, they haven't cut budget deficits to the same extent and they haven't cut government expenditure to the same extent. They're allowing a much more active role for governments to pick up the slack of the economy when the, government's, when the country is in recession and slow growth. The real challenges for the world economy in the future is where's world economic growth going to come from? It's not coming from Europe at the moment because of the agendas in the European economy. It's not coming from the UK. Increasingly, it's been coming from the United States and China. Uh, the big problem for the world economy at the moment, actually, is Chinese economic growth is likely to slow this year. So there's going to be real challenges for the world economy looking forward. If we take the United Kingdom, for instance, we've got real problems because our manufacturing sector has declined much more rapidly. Um, than many other advanced countries, including in Europe and North America. So our manufacturing sector is very small. We've relied on services, particularly business services, and particularly financial services, to generate growth. They're not going to generate the long-term growth in the future. I think there's broadly three sectors where we can look at to get future growth. Manufacturing, but it's small and it will take a significant time to get manufacturing back to a, a sustainable and long-term, make a long-term contribution to economic growth. Also, our creative industries are very successful. We can develop those. And often education, such as our universities, are very successful internationally. But we're going to need to think about how do we rebalance the economy? Where do we get future economic growth? And what's the role of government and the state in this process? If we look at all advanced countries, all advanced countries since the Second World War, the size of government has increased as a share of the economy because governments are an important source of economic growth, as well as social stability and providing social services. Now, so when we're thinking about our long-term growth of the economy, we need to see an active role for government to contribute in that, to invest in key sectors, such as green technology, to invest in key infrastructure, such as road infrastructure, rail infrastructure, and broadband and internet infrastructure. Governments need to contribute to economic growth. And this is the problem we've got at the moment, the idea that smaller government generates more growth. It doesn't. Government must be a key actor a key player in the growth process. What we need is the government's actively contributing to growth in the future. Now, when we think about borrowing, everybody's going on about public borrowing at the moment. Public borrowing for what? At the moment, we're borrowing to keep people unemployed. Let's borrow for growth. 
We, if a firm's, we wouldn't put constraints on businesses saying they cannot invest. We shouldn't put such constraints on governments. Governments need to invest in the future of the economy and the future of our children. There's too much rhetoric at the moment saying that the problem at the moment is if we have large budget deficits, our children will have to pay the debt back. The problem at the moment is if we don't generate growth in the future, our children will be living in a world where the economic growth is very slow and living standards are falling. That's the problem. Governments must generate growth. I think austerity is here for a long time unless we see a major change in economic policy globally as well as in the UK. Now that may seem a big challenge, but what we've seen in the past is major shocks, major economic crises have led to a rethinking, a rethinking of the way we think economics works and the rethinking of economic policy. If we look at the Great Depression, and this recession is very similar to the Great Depression in its scale, magnitude and global scope. If we look at the Great Depression of the early 1930s, we had similar policies then. Small government, the so-called Treasury Review in the UK, governments can't do anything. And we had slow growth. But that led to a rev revision of economic policy. It led to Keynesian economic policy. It said that governments can help capitalism work. And the Keynesian revolution kicked in in the 1950s and 60s as a response to the Great Depression. The, we had a policy response, we had a change in economics, we had governments saying we can help manage the economy, and the 50s and 60s and 70s were the, the early 70s were the global age of capitalism. We had rapid growth of the world economy, we had low levels of unemployment. We need to see a regime change in economics, we need to rethink economic policy to get us out of austerity, but also to ensure long-term growth in the future.